So guys, if you are into science and if you really want to learn something, this will be the most scientific video we have ever taped. It is incredible what Guy is going to tell you. If you like science, watch the video and don't skip until to the end. Welcome everybody, I'm Alexander Lintz, head of content of watchadvisor.com and I'm in Basel at Basel World 2019 at the booth of Tag Heuer and with me is Guy Semon. Welcome Hello. Guy. Nice to, to meet you one more time. Uh, welcome everyone. And uh, Guy Simon is um, a very special person at Tag Heuer, I would say, because he is the brain here. <laughs> Let me call you the brain, because you are, the, you are in the background developing a lot of technologies and you are CEO of Tag Heuer Technology Institute. Institute. So that's a company that has been separated from Tag Heuer and you are taking care of a lot of inventions and a lot of technologies and... So. It's a scientific laboratory. Um, and we, have, we are today 25 people in this lab. Uh, you can imagine 50 people from 50 persons from uh, uh, physics and 50 persons from mathematics. So half half. Half half. And we are, we are scienti scientists and we are trying to improve um, fundamental physics and of course to try to uh, support our uh, sister's company like uh, Tagheuer to improve uh, top uh, uh, complicated components you can find in a watch like uh, the regulator and particularly this year we are coming there with a new spiral. So this is, has been integrated in a new Autavia watch. It uh, is called, I have to read it again from the dial, uh, Isograph. Isograph. It is a chronometer certified because it's also yep. mentioned chronometer. But the basic is that you have been taking out of the existing movement the entire escapement and you are replacing it by an escapement that you have been inventing. Yes, spiral is not a new invention because uh, the, the invention of the spiral is, uh, was uh, with Mr. Higgins uh, at the end of the 17th century, invented in 1675. And Mr. Huygens was an amazing uh, scientist. And uh, the, the first spiral was uh, in uh, metal, in, uh, in steel. And actually on the market you can find two kinds of materials. The first is uh, elava, it's a metal alloy, and the second is silicon. Uh, of course, both of them have uh, advantages or defects. And I started from uh, defects to try to replace uh, and to improve existing technology because the target is not to copy existing air springs, but my, ta my target with my team is to improve existing technologies. And this is what we are presenting this year in the, uh, in the, with uh, Isograph technology and for Basel in uh, the new Otavia at Tagaya. So basically, um, can you try in easy words? <laughs> because I am sure it's rather complicated what you're doing. Not too much. Not too much, okay. In easy words to explain me and my audience uh, what you have been doing and uh, what you have been thinking about when developing that uh, nano... Nano composite. Nano composite. It's a nano composite hairspring. At the beginning of the story, it's a material. It's a material, but so too, uh, it's curious because uh, to, uh, to invent a material, you have to go first at the Mendeleev board to, uh, to choose uh, one element. And uh, fortunately, this year, it's the anniversary. It's 150 years of, uh, of a Mendeleev board. And I go on the second line uh, to find the carbon. Carbon atom is very interesting because uh, probably you know we are made with a uh, atoms of hydrogen and uh, carbon. Carbon... Are human bodies? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. And carbon is very interesting because chemistry of carbon is very interesting. We have a lot, lot, lot of possibilities to mix carbon atoms together. In this case, my, my first uh, interest was to find a very elastic material. Typically, providing the behavior of a polymer, plastic, keeping the structure of the metal. 
but unfortunately, this material doesn't exist. No, it's not very true, because at the atomic scale, you can find very, very interesting properties. The problem is, when you go from atomic scale to macroscopic scale, where we are today, you lose the properties. This is the difference between the normal physics, regulated with standard rules, with standard and linear equations, and the atomic scale, where the, the reality is just statistics and statistics physics. And it's huge, huge to understand what happens at the atomic scale. OK, this is the first time that we are transferring atomic properties to macroscopic scale. It's the first time in the world. It's not just for watchmaking in general. This material is a, a composite mixing two other traps. First is graphene. You know probably graphene. The name is nanotubes, carbon nanotubes. It's a new structure of, of carbon. Carbon is a very, very large, uh, large range of, of, of material. You start with graphite. Uh, you use a pen with graphite uh, probe to write on, your, on, on the paper. And then at the opposite, you have diamond, the top stronger material in the world. Between, you have the new material graphene, the, this allotrope. And graphene has huge properties, and particularly flexibility. You have to imagine at the atomic scale, you are able to, to, um, to, to manipulate nanotubes without fatigue, etc. It's just amazing. Now, if one more time, if you transfer to macroscopic scale, you, lo you lose properties. In this case, no. Why? Because it's, you have to imagine nanotubes. We, we grow nanotubes on a support like a nanotubes forest. Can you imagine a forest with many, many trees? Of course, it's empty. Between trees, you have what? It's totally empty. Okay? Vacuum. But the nanotubes are themselves empty. And on the side, on the side of the, of the, of the tube, it's also empty because the mesh is empty. You have exactly hexagons. Hexagons is typically the molecule of benzene. Everything is, em is empty. Typically, I will explain the process, but the at the end of the process, uh, the, the spiral manufactured is 96% manufactured with vacuum. It's, it's incredible. Let me just explain the process because it's cooking. Due to the amazing properties of the material, particularly the young modulus, the flexibility uh, module, it's possible with special uh, mathematical tools to calculate the exact shape, the geometry of the spiral. And then the result is a very complicated curve, uh, replacing the standard curve you, you can find with a normal spiral, and particularly the thickness at the center of the spiral and the, at the external part of the spiral is not the same, it's not regular. And, the, and there is a very complicated curve at the external part of the spiral, fixing the spiral to the, to the piton. And then, resulting of this, uh, of this perfect mathematical curve, you have the shape of the spiral. But now, you have to transfer or to transform uh, theoretical geometry into reality. And to do it, we need a support. We, we take a silicon wafer. A, a silicon wafer, why? Because it's, uh, the, the, proper, the chemical properties are good, it's clean, and it's flat. And now, we, will, we have to write spirals with a very curious pen. It's like an atomic pen, not with graphite, but with iron atoms. We write or we draw the spirals on the wafer. On a six inches wafer diameter, we can draw uh, 330 spirals, okay? On a six inches diameter uh, wafer. And then when it's done, we put the wafer in the machine. We have two machines, only one, two machines in the world. Uh, located in my laboratory in the Chaux de Fonds in Switzerland, manufactured in the US, engineered by, uh, by my team, and it's a chemical reactor. You put the wafer inside and then 
we, we have to create a first chemical reaction. You extract oxygen, it's very important because after it's explosive, but you inject at 950 degrees centigrade hydrogen with a high flow of hydrogen. And then you inject ethylene. Ethylene is a, is a gas uh, with inside uh, many, many carbon atoms. At this temperature, you crack ethylene atoms and uh, carbon atoms are free in the hydrogen atmosphere. Atoms are not very happy to be there, very far away at the equilibrium position, and they are going to iron atoms to fix them, okay, as a catalytic reaction. And finally, you can see nanotubes growing on the support on iron atoms, and after four hours of process, you keep, you reach the right thickness for the, the, for the spiral. You cut the reaction. You can see it's 96% totally manufactured with vacuum. And then you have to start a second reaction. You cut hydrogen, you replace hydrogen by argon, and you start a new reaction at a high, very high temperature. And then with three carbon atoms, you infiltrate the nanotubes forest with atoms. And atoms are linked together with covalent uh, links at the atomic scale. It's very strong. And the result is a composite made by carbon nanotubes and carbon. After you extract the wafer from the reactor, you put it in an oxygen plasma to adjust exactly the thickness of all spirals on the wafer, and it's finished. You take a small tool, you release the spiral, you give the spiral to the watchmaker, and then the spiral is chronometer. The beauty of this process is manufactured without human hand. It's totally provided and manufactured by chemistry and physics. Why? Uh, first benefit is normally at the center of the spiral you have a small component. Uh, in, in French the name is uh, virol. It's a, it's, a cor uh, it's a correct. It's a small part normally assembled by hand. In this case, no. The central attach is manufactured in the spiral. Okay? You have two solutions, like uh, for auto horlogerie, you can use uh, an adjustment of frequency for the spiral using a small mass on the balance wheel, or you can use a rocketry uh, to adjust piton. You have two solutions, okay. But you can tell me, <laughs> with silicon it's exactly the same. You have, you have the, vi the virol, the correct manufactured in the spiral. Yeah, but there is a big difference. <laughs> Silicon is very fragile. In this case, no. It's absolutely shock resistant and shock absorbing. This material is absolutely uh, elastic for specialists because you are probably fans of mechanics. The young modulus is roughly 20 uh, gigapascal. It's nothing. It's very, very uh, low. And uh, after, when you see the behavior, the dynamic behavior of the spiral, it's beating like very concentric. It's like a drop in water. It's perfectly concentric. If you look, uh, on a, you watch a normal spiral, you will see a main direction of, 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 uh, of, uh, of vibration on the spiral. In this case, it's absolutely concentric. The beauty of this technology, you can customize the center of the spiral uh, the Virol, uh, if tomorrow I, I, I design a, a spiral for a new Otavia, for example, I can replace the center of the spiral with, a sh with the shield of Tiger. It's impossible to copy and it's impossible to reproduce. But then the, the, the main benefit of this material is first, it's a non-magnetic material. Probably you know, but l roughly, between 10 and 50% of existing spirals are coming back each year for customer service due to electronic uh, devices and magnetic fields. Because I remember the time of my father at the middle of 16th, 
but the, the magnetic problem was not uh, very uh, very effective because uh, no no electricity no magnetic fields but today you have uh, yeah electric electronic uh, devices everywhere this material is non magnetic and, <clears throat> and this material is very efficient in terms of shock resistance uh, typically you can reach 5000 g's without deformation on the spiral unfortunately at 5000 g's you break the watch and particularly so die everybody will, <laughs> everything will be broken but not yes, not, not your the invention spiral. Not your but to, in terms of comparison with a normal spiral in metal at this level of shocks you 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 get an, an permanent deformation of the spiral and by the way if it's silicon the silicone is broken, uh, I don't know, 2,000 2, or 3,000 Gs before. Uh, <laughs> the, it's an industrial production. Our machines in, in La Chaux-de-Fonds are producing uh, each day uh, a large quantity of spirals. Uh, actually, our capability represents roughly 1,000, one, no, excuse me, 150,000 units per year. But it's scalable. If tomorrow we decide to uh, to multiply it by ten the production, it's absolutely possible. We have just to duplicate the machines, mm. and uh, this is for a short, a very quick introduction of this technology. Jesus Christ! Did you get the show? <laughs> I couldn't repeat not very much of what you have been saying, but it was very interesting, and I can imagine what you're doing. The most important thing is for for guys, uh, for uh, Guy, for people watching here is that you have been taking out something of a traditional watch that was, let's say, good, but not good enough to perform in a way that uh, uh, how a watch should perform today. You have been standardizing a process. You have been developing a material that is very stable, very shock resistant, very anti-magnetic, and you are able to any watch to replace um, the hairspring and to calculate a new hairspring on your basic technology. Yeah, yeah, it, absolutely. And you have to consider this new laboratory, this institute, like a vehicle. It's a vehicle to go not exactly in the watchmaking world, but with this vehicle, we can go outside far away. Because to, to create innovation, we have to go far away. If we, are, we are, if we are staying at the same universe, mixing same culture, same people, etc., we are just able to reproduce existing complications. It's good, it's, it's fine. But the target now is not just to copying. We have to improve, we have to replace, we have to invent. And the world is very large. With this vehicle, we go very far away. We are working on very strange topic, but fortunately, we are coming back with innovations. And thanks to our colleagues, we are providing absolute fundamental technologies to support them to include this technology is new in new movements in this year regulators etc but believe me believe me it is just the beginning of a story and yeah i invite you to uh, to follow our uh, work and we are coming very soon with uh, just amazing revolutions not just inventions uh, it is just the beginning of a story incredible incredible P. I said he's the brain. You didn't believe me. Now no, you believe no, no, me. No, no, no. Please, please, I would like to mention that I am the guy from the camera today. But behind me, I have 24 absolutely genius, amazing team. People coming from where? Ah, everywhere. On 25 people, I have 12 nationalities. Incredible. Uh, coming from uh, Croatia, Russia, Germany, uh, Swiss, uh, German Swiss, French Swiss. France, etc., etc., United States. It's one more time. It's it's a mix of culture to reinvent the fundamental principles. You have to mix cultures, skills, knowledge. Great. Thank you very much, Guy. I hope thank, guys thank you very you much. Could follow a little bit, but I was very scientific. But sometimes it's necessary to go in deep and not to only scratch on the surface and this was really a nice excursion thank you very much Guy um, he is CEO of the Tag Heuer Technology Institute 
So don't mess it up. He's not CEO of Tag Heuer, no. but CEO of the Technology Institute, a daughter, a subsidiary daughter of Tag Heuer, the watchmaker. Guy, thank you very much. Thank you to all of you and I'll see you soon. Yeah, and um, normally I say at this point, if you have any questions, please use the comment section here underneath. I think it would not be a good idea this time because I'm not sure if I can answer the questions. But what we could do is, if you guys have particular questions, I could forward them to you. Of do course. you agree? Ah, yes, of okay. course. So, okay, then you send them to me. I'll forward, him, I'll forward the questions to Guy and he will get back to you The best will be in direct, direct way by your email or something like this. We have to agree because I will be not able to answer your questions this time. And thank you very much, Guy. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. If you like what we are doing, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to like our videos, to follow us on Instagram and Facebook, of course, and to follow our ongoing reportages and everything we bring here from the Basel World 2019 show. Thanks for watching and thank you again, Guy. And Thank you very much for being so nice to also help these guys in finding some answers. Please don't forget that science is open. I manage a scientific laboratory, but you can visit it. Visit it. If you go to Switzerland, please ask my, my, my friend to visit us. It's open and you will see what we are doing. Wow. An invitation. And yes. we'll take it for granted. We will Come. bring you and show you the laboratory. Bye, guys. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.